In the previous video, we made observations about the terrain in scorched earth. Specifically, we noticed that the terrain is made of heavy sand, so that there is never any empty space underneath the surface. We deliberated about how to best store that data in memory, and we decided that it was best to use a one-dimensional array. We recognized that this data can be generated with a function, and we considered several candidate functions until we settled on a polynomial. In this video, I'll show you how to create the polynomial. This is the basic process. You have a set of points, and you use the set of points to create an augmented matrix. You transform the augmented matrix into reduced row echelon form, which isolates the coefficients of the polynomial. You can then draw the polynomial on the screen, and you'll notice that it passes through all of those points. The polynomial curve is the battlefield. This involves a kind of wishful thinking. You see, you have a set of data, and you want to find an explanation for that data besides the explanation which you know is true. You know that these points were either put here deliberately by you or another person, or they were put there randomly by a computer algorithm. But you choose to believe instead that they were put there because they lie on a polynomial. And because you believe that, you want to find that polynomial. This is how you use the points to create a matrix. Now you see here, I have an augmented matrix. It has three rows and four columns. Each row represents an equation in a system of equations. And there are three rows because there are three points. Now in the square part of the matrix, you see, well above them you see x to the zero, x to the first, x to the second. That's because within each of these columns, we're going to put the x values raised to those powers. And then the last column, we'll just put the y values. So let's do that. Now in the first row, first column, I put a 1. That's because 200 raised to the 0 power is 1. And then the next column, I put 200, because 200 to the first power is 200. And in the third column, I put 40,000, because 200 squared is 40,000. And then the y column, I just put the y value. Now let's do that for the rest of the rows. And so that is the completed matrix. Now after you have this matrix, you can begin to transform it into reduced row echelon form. There's some things I'd like to point out before we go ahead and solve the matrix. This matrix simply represents a system of equations. Each row represents a quantity of the unknown variables being added together. And since you have as many rows as you have unknown variables, you have exactly the amount of information that you need in order to solve the system. The column subscripts are the same as the exponents to which x is raised in each column. Likewise, the row subscripts are also the same as the exponents. Let's transform our augmented matrix into reduced row echelon form. The way that I do it is probably different from the way that you were taught to do it in school. Uh, in school, you were taught that you could analyze the matrix at every step, and when you would multiply a row, you would have a choice of which row to multiply. Uh, my algorithm does not make any choices at all. It's very automatic, very mechanical. Basically, there are two different types of numbers here. There's the ones you want and the ones you don't want. The ones you want are the diagonal numbers in blue and you want to change all of those into ones. The numbers you don't want are in red, and you want to change those into zeros. Now once you have diagonal ones and all the other numbers are zeros, you will have isolated all of the unknown variables, and you will know the coefficients of the polynomial. The way that you change diagonal numbers into one is by multiplying their entire row by the reciprocal of the diagonal number. The way that you change the non-diagonal numbers into zeros is by multiplying another row by the negative of the number which you are trying to get rid of, and then adding that multiplied row to the row of the number which you are trying to get rid of. My method basically consists of two stages. Now you start at the upper left cell, and in the first stage you move downward and to the right. Now as you move downward and to the right, you eliminate all the unwanted numbers, and when you hit the wanted diagonal numbers, you turn those into ones and after you hit the diagonal numbers, you move down to the next row. 
Now once you've gone all the way down to the bottom row, and you've gone all the way to the right, to the last diagonal number, that is the end of the first stage. The second stage moves upward and to the left, and as it moves upward and to the left, it eliminates all of the unwanted numbers. It's finally time to transform the matrix. You're probably getting tired of hearing my voice, and uh, to be frank, I'm tired of talking, so I'm just going to be quiet for a little while and let you watch this in peace. All right, well, now that we've solved the matrix, we have the coefficients of the polynomial. At this point, you're probably thinking, okay, uh, what was the point of that? That's just what they taught me to do in school, except a little bit different. Well, I'll tell you. The reason why I did it the way I did is because it's very easy to program. When you use the diagonal numbers to remove the non-diagonal numbers, you can do it in a very systematic and mechanical kind of a way. You'll notice that in order to remove the numbers in column 0, I use the diagonal number which is in column 0. So element 0, row 0, removes all other numbers in column 0. Likewise, element 1 in row 1 removes all the other numbers in column 1. and element 2 in row 2 eliminates all other numbers in column 2. I think this will make more sense when you see the code. I know I keep saying that, but just trust me, it'll get better. I can pretty much guarantee that this will always work with any set of points, just as long as you follow two rules. Rule number one, uh, don't allow points to be vertically aligned. In other words, make sure that none of the points have the same x value. What happens is, when two points have the same x, and you feed them into the matrix, and you solve the matrix, there will be a divide by zero exception. And I'll leave you to figure out why that is. And rule number two, don't use too many points. The problem is that uh, when you're working with computers, all of your data types have limits. Usually they're large enough that they'll do whatever you want them to, but in this application, you're going to find the limits uh, pretty quickly. When you lay down too many points, you're going to find out that uh, well, the curve doesn't quite pass through the points. It comes close, but it misses them. And then when you add another point after that, you'll notice that it misses all the points completely. So uh, be careful about your data types. Once you have the polynomial, calculating the y values is straightforward. All right, we're finally at the end of the second video. Man, this is exhausting. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm going to go take a nap. Uh, please stay tuned for the next video. Next time I'll show you the code. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.